What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi coach and give me six months of your time and I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to be doing part two with Dr. Kwan. It's going to be the college golfer who wants to join the LPGA Tour. This particular video, they're gonna be talking about her stuck elbow, her trail elbow to be specific, and how to get it unstuck. So if your elbow is stuck behind your body, you're having a hard time getting it in front of your body, and that's something you wanna work on, this is the perfect video for you, and let's go ahead and jump in. But before we get into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and that is Kiwi Golf Japan. If you did not know, YouTube does not pay the bills, so if you wanna help support this YouTube channel, allow us to continue to make videos for you guys, after the video is over, there'll be a link down below. Make sure to go ahead and click on that. Sign up for the Kiwi Platinum membership site. You'll get access to a bunch of videos and you'll really help support this YouTube channel. With that out of the way, let's get into Dr. Kwan and get rid of the stuck trail elbow. So before we get too far in the video, I do want to give a quick shout out to Be Better Golf. This is going to be the YouTube channel that we're currently reacting to. Be Better Golf does a bunch of videos where they go to American golf instructors, take lessons from them, and then post it online. So if you want to see a bunch of lessons from a bunch of different American golf instructors, this is the best channel on YouTube for you guys to go ahead and watch. Now, the whole video is going to be in English if you guys want to go to his channel. So if you guys speak English, it's perfect for you. And with that out of the way, let's start getting into this video. It's going to be kind of part two. Part one, they worked on ground reaction forces, and we actually have that video on our channel. This will be part two. They're talking about the elbow. So let's go ahead and jump in. So right step, uh, elbow, this is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have uh, this problem, when we try to uh, change the swing pattern, it doesn't work mm -hmm. because this thing. Yeah, it's in the water. Because always you will start down swing with this action. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to uh, pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, thanks for watching. You guys. All right, let's stop it there. So you guys kind of got the main point of the video right there. They're specifically talking about the trill elbow, and this is a right-handed golfer, so that's going to be the right elbow. Now, what we see with a lot of golfers, specifically ladies and juniors, is at the top of the swing, the trill elbow's movement tends to go more vertically down, and then what happens is they also rotate their upper body and lower body quite a lot, and then the trill elbow gets stuck behind the rib cage. So if you take a look at maybe your shirt and you see that little line, the seam line in the shirt, Imagine the elbow being behind that line somewhere on the downswing, and that's pretty much what they're talking about here. And this is going to be the main point of interest and what they want to change. Now, the reason why this could be a major issue, in my personal opinion, is whenever you get the elbow stuck behind the rib cage, as you approach impact, there's really only one place the elbow can extend towards, and that's towards the golf ball. And that tends to shoot the club head out towards the ball too much. You can get a lot of heel strikes. You can even miss the golf ball if you drastically overdo it. But it's really just not the most efficient way to swing the club. Now, let's go get into Dr. Kwan's analysis because I think his analysis is quite interesting as well. So let's go jump to that part as well. So this is, a, you know, the, now your body is aligned along the swing plane. Mm -hmm. So this straight line here is your swing plane. And um, so what we see is that uh, how the club head moves mm -hmm. relative to the swing plane. So let's stop it here and maybe help you guys out with the swing plane here. Typically when you're talking about swing plane, like a lot of people reference more so what TrackMan's definition of it is. And typically TrackMan, you know, they typically measure from club shaft parallel to club shaft parallel. So right around P6 to about P8 range. And they're typically measuring what the club shaft is doing, what plane is it on. And with driver, typically that's going to be right around 45 degrees. This particular example, I think the swing plane has been move to the backswing as well as the downswing as well, but it's pretty much the same thing that they're trying to measure there, right? It's going to be kind of the club shaft plane. It might even be the club head plane, but I'm pretty positive it's going to be the club shaft plane, what they're talking about currently right now. So as they start to go through the analysis, really take a look at this point right here. So this is going to be the elbow joint in the trail elbow. You're really gonna to wanna to see what this does relative to this plane, because this will be important. And then from there, they're gonna to switch to another view, really above the player, so the bird's eye view. There'll be some other interesting points to take a look at out there as well. So let's continue. But first of all, if I add um, the axis here, then you will see that your swing plane is kind of outward here. Mm -hmm. This green axis here, that's toward the target. Mm -hmm. But if this axis is uh, going this way, in this view, that means your string plane is actually outward. But the best way to uh, see it is uh, this one here. So this is the top view. Mm -hmm. This is the direction of the target. And then this line is the direction of your swing plane. So let's stop it here. So this little rectangular box is not necessarily the swing plane, right? Because the swing plane is not going to be a rectangle. However, more so, 
this is going to be the target line right here. And then this little line right here is just trying to show you a better representation of where the swing plane is through this section of the golf swing or kind of the direction that it's moving towards. So right around the impact zone, the swing plane is moving out this way, which is going to be to the right of the target line, right? So the target line's right here, and this one is going to be the swing plane. So swing plane is out to the right, and then they're also gonna talk about the hand path plane here in a second, which is gonna be resembled by this little box right here. So let's continue and hear that part. Your swing plane is uh, way oh, I see. outward. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, if you look at your hand motion plane, mm -hmm. it's inward here. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is your club head is moving outward. So let's stop it there. So just like I said, this little rectangular box right around the impact zone is kind of showing you the overall direction of the hand path plane at this particular point in the golf swing. So what they're trying to say is, the hand path plane is going left as it approaches impact and the club head is going out to the right. So there's some separation there. So the hands are moving in a different direction that the club head is moving and this has been known to create a lot of inconsistency in the swing. And we've talked about this in the past. We usually typically represent the lead arm at P6 relative to where the club head is positioned to kind of take note of this. So if you go to position six right now, then watch yourself in the mirror. I want you to take your left arm and make it point pretty far left of the target line and then try to get the club head really far behind the hands. It's essentially what she's doing at this particular point in the golf swing. So the lead arm is really far left, which means the hand path plane as it approaches impact is gonna be moving left or inside. And then the club head is gonna be shooting way out to the right, which is exactly what she is doing. So if you hit the golf ball from there, that's going to be one of the most incons inconsistent ways to hit the ball. Because what happens is, as the club head is moving out towards the golf ball and your hands are moving in the opposite direction, the resistance, the twisting on the shaft, there's really not that much of it, which means that the shaft is really easy to twist, which means it's difficult to control low point as well as where the face angle points. It's just a difficult place to hit the golf ball from. But let's continue with this analysis because there's some more interesting things. Right. Your hand is moving inward. They are not moving in the same direction. This is not as efficient. Not good. Gotcha. So something is happening in your body which hinders the natural progression of motion. Mm -hmm. So the club head is moving this way, your hand is moving this way. Mm -hmm. you, you have you know, very different minds mm -hmm. here. You, your club head has a, its own mind mm -hmm. and your hands are, are moving this way. Mm -hmm. So that we need to narrow down mm -hmm. the, the gap. Dr. Kwan, can, can you? So getting back to what he said right there, narrowing down the gap, that would be that same example. Go to position six. Get your lead arm now, instead of it being really far left of the target line, try to get a little bit closer to the target line and then align the club head a little bit closer to the hands. That would be more so what they're talking about when they say closing the gap. They're trying to get those two closer together. So where the hand path is moving towards, the club head is also moving towards that. So the separation is less or less. This is something I really like to see in the golf swing, which is not taught a lot lately, but I do think it's a you know huge form of inconsistency that a lot of people are doing these days. You show us like with your finger where the hand plane is and then where the club plane is just so I know. This is the hand pad here. Based okay. on this, we can compute the plane. So this is plane. the part that's going in, you're saying? Yeah, here. so this is the the hand motion plane here. Okay, good. It is pointing the yeah. left side of the target. Gotcha. Yeah. So you tend to bring your hands in, but the club head is actually going out. Gotcha. Yeah. And just to maybe reiterate, I'm sure a lot of you guys already get this, but it's not a bad thing that the hands are moving in in that section of the swing. That's actually something that you want to have. It's more so that the club head is moving in such a severe opposite direction. That's really the issue. I think you guys got that, but I just wanted to reiterate that just to make sure we're all on the same page. And let's continue. This happens when your trail elbow is stuck. So let's take a look at it. So let's stop it here. So now they're starting to get into kind of the root cause. What kinematic or what body part is really causing this? And they're going to be talking about the trail elbow. All right, that's it for you guys on YouTube. But before you guys click off, let me give you some quick wrap up points. So when it comes to the stuck elbow, I think this is a very common thing that we see with a lot of our clients who come in for lessons. And the way that it actually comes to be, in my personal opinion, is going to be more so with what you're doing with the lead arm as well as what you're doing with kind of the pelvis and rib cage rotation in the early transition. Now, Dr. Kwan took a pretty different approach in this particular video. And if you want to hear his whole approach and kind of how they went about actually fixing it, well, you definitely got to make sure to sign up for the membership site because that's going to be all of that on the membership site as well as my whole reaction to what I thought about that. But for takeaway home uh, points for you guys, I think the main thing you should worry about when it comes to the top of the swing a lot of times with the stuck elbow, if you can change the top of swing just slightly, you're gonna make it a whole lot better. You might not completely fix it, but you will make it a whole lot better. 
So one of the major points we focus in on is going to be kind of where the lead arm is positioned relative to the body or how much abduction does it have or how much are you pulling that arm across the chest. If you're getting a stuck elbow, you're probably pulling that arm quite a lot across the chest and that's shifting the overall elbow position way behind the rib cage to start at the top of the swing. And it's gonna be really difficult to get it back out in front of the rib cage if you're doing that. So I would highly recommend watching one of the videos where we did, um, we talked about the lead arm, I think with Athletic Motion Golf, we reacted to one of those videos. I think that would be an amazing video for you guys to watch if you have this stuck elbow, because it's gonna at least get you the basic stuff to start to go ahead and do that. Now, like I said a little bit a while ago there, make sure to sign up for our QE Platinum membership site. It really does support this channel. You can watch this whole video as well as 320 plus other videos that's currently on the site. And we post about 20 to 25 new videos every single month. So check that out, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video.